Homeopathy is its own category of alternative medicine that emerged some 200 years ago. Not all natural or herbal remedies in your pharmacy are considered homeopathic. Homeopathic medicines are based on a few theories of disease distinct from conventional medicine, the most famous being like cures like. That's the idea that if something gives you a rash, that same thing can be used to treat rashes. A German doctor named Samuel Hahnemann coined the term homeopathy in 1807. He thought medicine then was doing more harm than good. You can't totally blame him, I mean, they were still using leeches at the time. But that's really all the credit you can give him. He started doing experiments on a small group of volunteers as well as on himself, which is not good scientific practice. In one, he ate the bark of the cinchona tree, which in his day was used as a treatment for malaria. After he ate a bunch, he got symptoms he thought were similar to malaria. That led to his first principle of homeopathy, like cures like. He thought that when a substance in large doses caused certain symptoms, in small doses it could cure those same symptoms. Here's an example. A homeopathic remedy if you can't sleep is coffea cruda, which is just very, very, very diluted amounts of unroasted coffee beans. Dilution, aka reducing the concentration of something, is the second principle of homeopathy. Hahnemann thought a sick person only needed a very small amount of an active ingredient. He used a dilution scale that increased by factors of 100, a scale denoted with a C. You can see that on a homeopathic label. One way to make coffea cruda is to put one drop of coffee bean extract in a vial containing nine drops of water. Then take a drop from that vial and put it in another vial with nine drops of water. 60 times. That was a pretty standard dilution for Hahnemann. The thing is by the 60th vial, you've diluted your coffee so many times that there really isn't any left. Statistically, beyond a 13C dilution, you have zero chance of finding a single molecule of the active ingredient in your vial. Now, keep in mind that in Hahnemann's age, the concept of atoms and molecules as fundamental units of matter hadn't really been developed. So maybe he couldn't know that you could dilute something until it was effectively gone. Today, though, we know that full well. But homeopaths still insist the dilution principle is sound. They also claim that water can somehow remember what has dissolved in it and pass the effects of those absent molecules on to the patient. But to date, there has not been repeatable convincing evidence of this phenomenon, which violates some deeply held principles of physical science. So no, your homeopathic water doesn't remember the coffee that may have once been in it. Sorry. The foundational ideas of homeopathy are bunk. The U.S. National Institutes of Health have said that several key concepts of homeopathy are inconsistent with fundamental concepts of chemistry and physics. But what if somehow it still works in some mysterious way we don't yet understand? Well, scientists tested that too. A 2015 report from the Australian National Health and Medical Research Council considered the results of about 200 studies on the effectiveness of homeopathy. After looking at the evidence, they concluded that homeopathic remedies are no better than a sugar pill, a placebo. The studies that have shown benefits of homeopathic remedies had flawed methodologies. The Aussies concluded there are no health conditions for which there is reliable evidence that homeopathy is effective. At best, homeopathic remedies are a harmless waste of money. At worst, people might endanger their health by skipping treatment or care that they need. For example, there are homeopathic asthma inhalers being sold. These aren't any better at stopping an asthma attack than a placebo. An untreated asthma attack can be fatal. And remember, homeopathic remedies are not evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Although that might change, for now it's probably best not to cure whatever ails you with whatever ails you. That's the science, but if you're still curious about alternative treatment options, you should talk to a medical doctor. If you're looking for more science, check out these videos on multivitamin supplements and aspartame. And have an idea for a video? Leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.